morning and a blessed Christmas to you and to your loved ones. Uh, to those of you who are worshiping with us online, you can find our service folder for our Christmas Day worship on the membership documents. Look for the link at the bottom of the homepage, membership documents, and you'll find a service folder there. Our worship theme for this morning is, what is the gift God gives us today? Not just a cute and cuddly baby, he gives his son in loneliness to make it possible for us to receive light brighter than the sun, the creator of all that is, the eternal God, the child who makes us God's children. Praise God for this indescribable gift. We let loose our praises to our saving God this morning, Christmas Day morning. We open by singing, O come all ye faithful. May God bless our Christmas worship. Please stand. rejoice unless they are pardoned. And how can they be pardoned without looking to the Lord for mercy? Therefore, let us turn to our Lord and seek his pardon. We confess. 
O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the glad God, tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. The Lord Emmanuel has come. His birth among us brought us hope. His death and resurrection confirmed that hope and made eternal life ours. Therefore, it is my joy to tell you today, by the authority of the world's Savior, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join in singing Angels We Have Heard on High.
The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. This is the word of our Lord. We sing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. And that life was the light of men. 
The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God, his name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. The word John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. This is the gospel, the good news of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We'll sing Peace Came to Earth. Father, 
full of grace and truth. It's one of the first games that little children learn, isn't it? Peekaboo. And then later on, peekaboo will turn into hide and seek, and then there might be all sorts of variations of hide and seek as one gets older. You ever feel like God is playing hide and seek with you? Does it ever feel like God is hiding and it's somehow our job to find God? You think of Joseph in the Old Testament, sold by his brothers into slavery and then thrown into prison for quite some time for a crime that he never committed. He might have wondered, where is God hiding? Or Elijah, Elijah the prophet at one point he thought, he thought that he was the only believer left in Israel. He said that God should take his life because his job was over. He, he didn't need to be a prophet anymore because it seemed as though no one was going to listen to him. You might have wondered, where, where is God hiding? Or you think of that period between the Old Testament and the New Testament, some 400 years, when it seemed that God was silent. Where was God hiding? You think of the Apostle Paul, told by the Son of God himself to be a missionary to the world, and then he was finding himself beaten and imprisoned. Where is God hiding? Maybe it seems like God is hiding in your life at times when there's bad news after bad news. Maybe a dear child Dear loved one is sick. Maybe it seems like God is hiding when the temptations come one after another. Maybe it feels like God is in hiding when you can't when you can't be with that loved one that's far away. Or when there is loneliness or depression that seems to be creeping in, it might seem as though God is hiding. Think of all the news stories of this past year, one that maybe has gotten lost, maybe there are people on the Gulf Coast that are feeling as though God is hiding. Some are still living in tents from all the hurricanes that came up the Gulf of Mexico this year. That story maybe has been lost in all of the shuffle this year. It actually doesn't surprise me if at times you or others might feel as though God is hiding. The prophet Isaiah talked about God like this. Truly you are a God who hides himself. God hides himself to protect us. It might seem strange that God would hide himself, but it's actually for our good. Our good. God lives in unapproachable light. God lives in all, in the essence of all glory and power and might and majesty and perfection. And that means if, if he were to come down to us in all of that might and power and majesty and glory, that we would most certainly die. None of us would dare to touch one of those huge power lines if it were to fall to the ground. We would, we would not touch it deliberately. The sheer power and force of the energy would, or could, kill us. In fact, electrical current must be transformed before it comes into our homes, because if it doesn't come in at a lower intensity, it would most certainly burn up our appliances. God is definitely interested in making himself known to us, but he doesn't want to destroy us in the process. This is why he hides. Now that may sound like a contradiction, but it is true. It's important for us to understand that our God is a hidden God. He's not hiding from us, though. He hides when he reveals himself to us. He is never a God in hiding. He is there. We just need to know where to look for him. And that's what makes Christmas so special. To the world that wonders, where is God? 
to a world that wonders where is God when we see one tragedy after another, to a world that wonders where is God when a pandemic sweeps through this world, to a world that is tempted to think that God has abandoned them, God shows up. He arrives He arrives in a place where we least expect to find him in a trough, a feeding trough. He arrives in a place where cattle feed. At Christmas, God shows up as a child. God shows up in diapers. God in human flesh to bring life into a dying world. John writes for us, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. It's an astounding statement. It makes us gasp like we did earlier with the hymn writer. The word Jesus became flesh. Words are how people communicate with each other. This is how God has chosen to communicate with us. He sends Jesus, his son, the word made flesh. Do you want to know God's heart and God's mind and God's counsel, God's wisdom to human beings? Then we need to know his son, Jesus. We need to know him more and more. Sin is why the word became flesh. Your sin and my sin. Our sins brought Jesus to this earth. Our failures, our mistakes, our guilt made Jesus come down to this earth, brought Jesus down to this earth. Our fits of, of anger, our lack of self-control, our episodes of greed, our failures to trust in God and God alone. That's what brought Jesus down to this earth. But thankfully, sin is also what set Jesus apart from all of us. Sin is what sets him apart because where we failed, he succeeded. Where we fell short, Jesus hit the mark perfectly. Where we slipped and fell, he stood tall and was perfect in our place. Where we were guilty, Jesus was innocent. He lived a sinless life in your place. John tells us that in verse 14 there, We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. It's kind of a strange statement. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. <clears throat> People can't look upon God's glory and live. Moses asked to do as much in the Old Testament. And God said, no, I'm not going to allow it or else you will die. Isaiah caught a glimpse of God's throne room and he was terrified that he was going to die. So God gave us the greatest gift of all at Christmas. God gave us his glory that we can look upon and see a baby Lying in the hay. In this baby we see God's grace and God's truth. Jesus would grow up to be the living embodiment of grace. Why? Why would he become human after all? Why would the, why would the creator take on being a creature? Why did he do this? Did, was it that we deserved such love and kindness from Jesus? Of course not. In fact, we had only ridiculed and scorned his commands by breaking his commands, and yet he showed up. That's God's grace. His grace to us that he lived for us, that he died for us, that he forgives us. He is also full of truth. It says... We live in a world where, where truth is flexible. That might be a nice way of putting it. We live in a world where truth is, is flexible, but Jesus reveals the unchangeable truth of God. He reveals what we need to know about God. He reveals that God's might and power and glory is for our benefit, to rescue us and to save us, that God wanted to use his might and majesty for your salvation. I think there's a, a beautiful story that I, I was reading this past week that, that reminded me of that. 
the story of Jesus being arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. Do you remember they sent a detachment of soldiers to him? It could have been dozens, maybe over a hundred soldiers. They go to Jesus and they say, we are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And with this simple word, he says, I am he, and they fall to the ground. They get up, they dust themselves off. They're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. I am he, Jesus says, and what happens? They fall to the ground again. With this word, with this simple word, they simply fell to the ground, and then, and then in the next moment, as they go ahead to rest, to arrest Jesus, Peter steps forward and cuts off the ear of the high priest's servant. And at that moment, Jesus could have said, it serves you right, go back to where you came from. But instead, he said, put your sword away. And he picked up that ear, and he healed the man. His ear, his hearing was fully restored. Jesus used his power and might for healing, to bring help to us. The power and glory of God hidden in the God-man Jesus Christ is used to save you, to rescue you and me. Although we might have had times or we will have times in life when it feels like God is hiding, rest assured he is not hiding. Rest assured your God has revealed everything that you need to know about him in Jesus and the work of Jesus Christ in this world and on the cross. Rest assured that you can find, you can find Jesus in his word. You just need to know where to look. There God makes it clear to us that the God of heaven and earth uses all of his power and might for our salvation. The one and only has appeared from God, God's Son. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. It was for you and your salvation. Amen. <clears throat> We continue by singing the Magnificat, Holy is Your Name. Please join me not just in singing the refrains, but all of the verses that are printed there as well. We will start with verse 1, and then after each verse, we'll go right into singing the refrain.
to continue to bring your gifts in response to the gift that we have received in the manger this Christmas. You can see the different ways that you can give of your offering. There are also offering plates in the back of our worship space. We continue with the prayer of the church. <coughs> Praise, honor, glory be to you, O Lord our God. With angels we magnify your name. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men. We adore your divine goodness and praise you for sending deliverance and fulfilling your promises, for rejoicing more in earthly presence than in your heavenly pre present of your Son. Forgive us, O Lord. For those times we tell more about our earthly treasures than our eternal treasures, Jesus. Forgive, Forgive us, us, O Lord. Accept our thanks for the eternal gift conceived out of love for this world. Accept our thanks, O Lord, for bringing the knowledge of this divine truth to us. Bless the musicians, singers, and messengers who proclaim the birth of your Son around the world. May many hearts receive the good news of a Savior born for them in Bethlehem. May these glad tidings bring hope to the discouraged and peace to the troubled. May the lonely this Christmas season see the good Christmas message, the assurance of your presence. May the peace of Christmas fill our nation and the nations of this world. This we ask in the name of our Savior, Christ the Lord. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private prayers.
find our Savior, Christ the Lord, who gives us his body and blood for forgiveness and peace. Through this meal, bring us life and life. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.
body and blood of our Savior Jesus strengthen you and keep you in the faith until the end of the rest. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace and joy. Amen. go on your way, receive the blessing of our Lord. May the Lord who loves you so much that he sent his Son to this world bless you and keep you. May the Lord who loves you so much that he took on flesh in order to die for you, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord who loves you so much that he leads you until you join the angelic choir, look on you with favor and give you his peace. Let all God's people say, Amen. That concludes our Christmas Day worship. We'll hear a postlude. I believe it's O Come All Ye Faithful. Is that uh, what I saw there earlier? No? <laughs> Mark the Herald. Angels sing. We'll hear a, a postlude. Mark the Herald. Angels sing. Thank you very much again to all our musicians uh, who helped to beautify worship and to use their talents to God's glory uh, through this Christmas season. Uh, I hope to see you on Sunday at worship at Cunningham Hall within Starkey Ranch. And also, there are offering envelopes in back if you haven't picked up your offering envelopes for 2021. They're at the table in back. May you have a blessed Christmas continued celebration.